New Year's resolutions have been broken by now, but new leaves have turned. It's February 1st, 2013. I'm Daniel Calvin, and this is Season 3, Episode 100 of Make and Break Radio. Bob, Bob Wood, National Program Director of the Chum Group, worked with us in producing... Guess who's coming? Guess who's coming? Guess who's coming? Dan Calvin. Back again. Who is he? Just your favorite DJ Savior. Using and confusing beats that you never heard. Put a smile on your face like old to bright. You're just fessing, man. I don't even want to hear about it. You're just you're listening to Make and Break Radio on RadioMacNaw.org. Usually at this early part of the show, I would announce the show number, the name of the show, and even my own name, but things are different this week. It isn't just February 1st. This show is an aural mile marker of a more profound importance. I'm going to call this episode one, season three of Make and Break Radio. Why do I do this? Because this episode is all about changes in attitude, format, and inspiration. This is the start of Make and Break's third year. This is Make and Break Radio's 100th episode. Welcome, enjoy, and celebrate with me. I have some good music coming up, some silly things from this past week and the last few weeks at least, as well as some old recaps that have been used before but seem relevant now. Let's get on with the show. Recently I saw on sports television something about a a fake award being given out to two brothers. I think they're brothers. They look like brothers. They actually look more like walruses to me. So instead of being brothers being brothers of the year because they're excellent football coaches, I was quite surprised that there happened to be some walruses that were excellent football coaches. That being said, that reminded me of an old bit I did about siblings years back. And way back in episode 18 of Make and Break Radio on RadioMackinac.org. And I guess I will preface this bit with an anecdote that you may not be aware of in relation to siblings. Sigmund Freud had, uh, had a brother, and his, his name was uh, Stefan. And Stefan Freud, in a very interesting choice of trades, actually worked for the Luftwaffe designing and the uh, predecessors of the Luftwaffe designing blimps. Very, very phallic blimps. All right, here's Black Sheep Siblings from 2011. History books are filled to their bindings with the exploits and anecdotes of the greatest characters, men and women, that have occupied this earth. We know just how great Peter and Alexander were, how much more Caesary Julius was than the rest of the Romans. While these mavens of magnificent were not always magnanimous, They did leave their mark on society and history more indelibly than most common schlubs. That being said, they may have been extraordinary, but they, like everyone else, were human. Did you know that George Washington had a mole the shape of the state of Delaware on his left shoulder? Egyptian Queen Cleopatra never learned to ride a bike. Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard the Pirate, only grew his menacing beard because he never was taught that he was left-handed, thus rendering razors useless. On the other hand, Sometimes an individual's own shortcomings are not the only source of embarrassment or ridicule for great men and women. A contemporary example is Dennis Quaid, who according to IMDb, is an active and relevant movie star, as he has been for the last 35 years. Well, our pal Dennis has a brother named Randy, who once was a movie star himself. You see, Randy's crackhead wife has convinced him that unseen Hollywood elites are out to kill him, sending him down a spiral of debt, fear, and legal issues. Dennis, I'm sure, is proud to describe how his brother is living out of a Prius, moving from town to town on a nearly daily basis in western Canada trying to stay one step ahead of the supposed Hollywood whackers. Other great siblings of the famous and powerful include Billy Carter, President Jimmy Carter's brother, famous for making a failed attempt at name recognition based beer brewing. Who born before 1985 could ever forget Roger Clinton, Bill's brother, a third class musician and and former cokehead whom his brother pardoned before leaving office in 2001. There are some lesser known siblings of infamy that I'd love to share with you. Attempting to maintain some modicum of chronological order, I'll start with Genghis Khan's youngest brother, Altan Ank, a little known player in Mongolian horde life. He differed from his older, more barbarous brother by eschewing the life of the horseman, as he preferred to spend his days in the yurt back home, 
making handicrafts with their mother and Aunt Nergui. Leonardo da Vinci had a brother as well. Tony da Vinci had a decent nest egg built up by the time Leo caught him selling bootleg versions of Leo's masterworks at Milan flea markets. Antonius Stradivarius, maker of the famed violins, had several brothers who worked with him, creating instruments with unsurpassed tonal quality. One brother did not. Dale Stradivarius holds the ignoble record for inventing the kazoo, much to his family's chagrin. Count Dracula's mother was vegan. Famed scientist and philosopher Sir Isaac Newton had a brother until a familial falling out. Archie Newton expatriated to Portugal after a lawsuit filed by his brother against Archie's apple orchard determined that Old Arch was liable for injuries Isaac sustained while napping under one of Archie's trees. Upon moving to Portugal, however, Archie Newton built up a rather sizable orchard of figs. John Henry, a recognizable character from American folklore, was more man than myth. Just thank his lucky stars that he never knew that his brother Darnell was the unwitting salesman of the infamous steam hammer that while it did drive less steel, it did drive John Henry to his grave. One of America's most famous suffragists, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, had a sister. Unlike her picket sign wielding civil rights oriented sister, Rachel Stanton was an inventor and author. She designed a corset that could be cinched with one hand and wrote a book that received little critical acclaim, entitled How to Stay Fit While Barefoot and Pregnant. She later made millions after adding the pseudonym John Sterling and retitled her tome, Supper's Ready, How to Keep a Wife. Thomas Edison had a sister. Only one line is written about Tammy. Nearly nothing is known of her since, seemingly even as a child, she was entirely persona non grata. In one of his workshop notebooks, Edison wrote, The most licentious of harlots have nothing on my sister Tammy. While Slobodan Milosevic was committing ethnic atrocities against humanity, his brother was working on some cleansing of his own. Miroslav Milosevic was the creator of the Honey Lemon Cayenne Pepper Cleanse Regimen and was a proponent of colonics. There you go. Now that that's all over, I'll think of my own brother and sister and try to imagine who of us is the black sheep. Make and Break Radio with Dan Calvin. Why have I never seen someone in a movie actually have to crouch down on the floor and get on their hands and knees and reach in with their huge paws to extricate their mail from a P.O. box located ankle high in the wall of mailboxes? This is the problem with modern cinema.